Welcome back. Uh, right now, we'll be delving into a conversation on the state of the nation and on issues making the rounds uh, right now as regarding to the polity. I've been joined in the studio now by uh, a lawyer and a policy analyst talking about Prince Ojoka Ojoka Esquire. He joins me now to do justice to the issues at hand. Good afternoon and welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Amadine. It's good to Prince have you. Ojoka. Prince Ojoka. All right. It's good to have you. Thank so, you. Um, let's start with, um, I believe, the issue that is causing the most... Uh, uh, conversation at the moment, uh, River State, we have um, that um, the assembly complex uh, was uh, being, uh, as they say, renovated, uh, but we saw portions of it being uh, demolished, so to speak. And uh, we've seen that the governor has presented the 2024 ap appropriation bill to the State House of Assembly, which at the moment, uh, from his own perspective, comprises just five members. I'd like to get your thoughts on this tussle that we're seeing uh, seemingly between the current governor and uh, other forces, uh, some alleging to be the current FCT minister. Before we dash into what transpired in that complex, I want you to understand what that action of the politician in River State is generating. You are aware that gunmen in River State had key four soldiers just less than 24 hours. Now, there's going to be so much of these kind of crises. The moment there's no peace mm. in that state, all that insecurity and every other bandit and every other government are going to take advantage of that crisis that is happening in River State and constitute nuisance and create mayhem and life will be wasted. These are national assets. If there's any reason why they want to do a renovation, not at this time when there are crises going on. We already know that at this stage, it cannot be seen as renovation. What kind of renovation are you doing at this time? Who is doing the renovation? When was it approved that they were going to do renovation at this time? Just when we saw the news of the decampees. It is people's right to decamp to whatever party they want. If they lost the people that, oh, fine. Once you've been elected by a political party and you are not allowed to decamp within the period of that your four years, then we follow that part of the law. But if the law cannot be enforced on that part of jurisdiction, then people should be allowed to decamp peace. Who care about it? It doesn't change the fact that these are candidates who have been elected. Shouldn't they have to vacate their seats? Now, vacate their seats. How many people have you seen in previous years that vacate their seats, that the courts turn back those judgments because they vacate their seats? The law is there. Who is enforcing it? The law people know that, of course, once they decamp, of course, they should be able to leave their seat. But who is enforcing it? How many of them has the court has made a pass judgment that because you decamp from one political party at that stage, you lose your seat and pass judgment in favor of the political party they left? All of that issues are left unanswered up to this moment. The enforcement is what we are talking about. Now, look at the crisis that is being generated in River State right now. Look at the lives that are being wasted every day in River State. Who is causing it? The politician. They have become our problem. So long as I'm concerned, uh, concerned they remain our biggest problem. In the course of we trying to look for solution by electing people that can lead us, we discover that we elect people that are causing trouble for us. The government is no longer the causing problem. Look at what is causing this problem. The politician, the allies, the so-called leaders. And we just look at them, the voters who voted for them, we look at them and we'll be like, uh, this is exactly what and uh, why we voted for these people. If that is not the reason why we voted for these people, then they should focus on the reason why we voted for them. And do justice to the law, which allow them to make decisions in respect of their states. And allow peace to reign. The people who voted for those House of Assembly or State Assembly members voted for people that can sit and legislate and make laws that favors the states. I'm not people just there about putting dramas and all these unnecessary dramas. We want that. Yeah, indeed, uh, what you, like you said, it's, it's becoming more about politics than it is governance for the people. But speaking about, um, you know, the fears that I believe perhaps the, the River State Governor has, is it so easy to impeach a sitting governor? Uh, it is believed that once you have majority in the uh, 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 state assembly or national assembly it's just a matter of if they decide to do it or not is this something that is so straightforward if the 27 members say well we want him gone they don't need a valid reason they don't need something to present to the people and say this is why we have impeached this person it's just a matter of whatever they decide when this issue all started mm. the 
forget there was a bomb blast. First, it was a bomb blast mm. in that same complex. Up to this moment, they are yet to bring the people to book. They are yet to investigate, to persecute those people that carry out those drastic acts of destroying our national asset. Now, from bombing the, the complex, we are now seeing again that now it is renovation. Well, what is very simple about this case and why it is so transparent is that the former minister, who happens to be the godfather to the southern governor, and having this dramatic episode, probably you call it a monologue, or probably you call it a tragic comedy, she will understand the fact that nobody is pointing fingers at him, but eyes are looking at him. If we are not pointing fingers at him, does not mean eyes are not watching him. What's his body language? Somebody is instigating those members to do what they are doing. Now, when we were in school, we had one or two clubs we belong to, and I will tell you, one of the club languages, a fair coup is counterbalanced to everybody. So when you plan to impeach a governor, you think he's going to sit down and watch you come and impeach him. He's going to fight back. He's going to fight back. It's like coming to a man's house to rob him of his property, which he thinks are his rights, or coming to sleep with a man's wife before his eyes. That's what the River State Governor is feeling like right now. Like, you were a former governor, of course, I respected you. We've been in a relationship, but now you are a minister. Focus on your minister job and do it. Just what you're doing it in the city and allow the state to breathe. If you allow the state to breathe, I am the governor. If you have any objection or any suggestion, bring it to my table. And I will see what I can do. But not for you to come and make decisions for me as the governor. And as such, people want loyalty. Nobody's going to be a governor and see that the state assembly or the national assembly or the senator representing his constituency or working in line with that state are not subject to him. People want to control the judiciary, they want to control even the police. At that state level, we saw what happened in River State, we saw what happened in Bayasa State. A governor who feels no power, the first thing he wants to do, he wants to control. We saw the case of Kogi State. How the late Chief Justice, Nasha Jana, blessed memory, of course, was so humiliated when the governor of that state tried to see how he can manipulate the, the, the CJ. And he ended up you know, humiliating the, the state assembly that they became like a dog before him. Every decision they take, he has to decide what they do. Eight years has gone by, no development. That's what happened in a compromise system. When people compromise, definitely, the masses will suffer because it is check and balance. Nobody is checking anybody, everyone just following one particular direction because one person is in the arms of affairs, making those decisions. So we are saying that. If you are a governor, act as a governor. If you are a minister, act as a minister. If you are a House of Assembly member, act as a House of Assembly member. Make decisions that favor the people. That is why you are elected. Speaking about decisions that favor the people, what do you think it's, it's uh, what are the implications for the fact that this appropriation bill is in the process of being passed and at the end of the day, we really just have five persons now seeming like a majority. What does this mean for the people of River State that at the end of the day, such a, an important decision will end up being made by what is uh, originally a minority in the uh, State House of Assembly? Now, the beauty of democracy is very simple. Mm. Now, let's take, for example, the National Assembly, where you have over 107 senators. Some of them are members of the PDP, some members of the APC, some members of the Labour Party, and what have you. Now, they all come together to make decisions that favor the nation. We are discussing the state of the nation. That is how people who claim to be patriotic about the country are not patriotic. If not, what is wrong with you being in APC, I being in PDP, I will make decisions for the common good and the interest of our people. That's what the beauty of democracy is. It's a matter of choice. Some persons were not giving tickets to run for this election in the, a particular politi uh, political party, and they find favor in the eyes of men in the other party they swap into, and they were elected, duly elected. And then what happened? Somebody out there is like cajoling them. 
because he is in a particular party or he's trying to catapult himself to a, a, a particular party, he wants them to follow him. Can they not act as members of the APC or the PVP or the MVP or what have you in that capacity that they were elected for as a member of the state house of assembly without doing politics? We do too many politics that we fail to understand that it is the people that will suffer it, the people that will promise all heaven and earth during campaign. I'm going to give you this, I'm going to do this, and all of that. Today you are there. They have elected you. Instead of you to make decisions that favor them, you are rather doing politics. Politics is not going to take us anywhere. This is not time for campaign anymore. We are done with campaign. We have been elected. Work for the people, for the interests of the people. Leave anyone trying to manipulate you. I'm talking to the in particular. This is exactly what we have in other states. When they are being manipulated, manipulated by either the governor or a minister. You go to police station, they are telling you, you call somebody, you call one big man. To hell with you, I don't call anybody. I call God. He says, see for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything shall be added to me. Don't tell me to call any politician. We are not God. Stop worshipping men. In all of it, what happened? Give it a plus or minus. If all of us are on this planet today, a hundred years from today, we will all be gone from this planet. And what happened next? Your legacy. What happened next? What did you stand for? What did you believe in? Without fighting for something. Without believing for, in something. Without dying for something, what are you living for? We believe in a just cause. And that's why we are saying that at this stage, people should forget about doing politics. I work for the people. It is what you do for the people that the people will remember you. Look at the government of Kodisha, for example. Eight years has gone by. Next month, he's leaving the office. What are the people going to say about him? What is he going to point his hand and say, this is what I do for my state? I'm not indicting him. I'm just working on the conscience of the people. If democracy be for the people, by the people, are ah, for the people. We really need to hand in your chest after eight years. Look at the former president. What is his legacy? Eight years went back. Today he has retired into his hometown. What are the people saying about him? Within that eight years. This is the legacy we're talking about. Whatever you do, people are watching you. And you'll be judged by what you do as a politician. Because you were entrusted with the public forum which was supposed to use it for the betterment of the people, and once you fail to do that, you become the canker worm. That the people see you and reconcile you with negativity. So we are saying that, for the case of River State, five persons by law are not allowed to make decisions. That kind of decision of a budget, of a state. But it is time for all hands to be on deck. The better leave politics and come back. And realize that the only reason why they are elected is for the people and make this decision for the people. Now, generally, we are going to start a new budget here. The people should be feeling the impact of it. By now, all of us are supposed to be together deciding on that budget, discussing the budget. Mm -hmm. How does it benefit the people? What do we, are we going to do differently from what we have been doing in previous budget? That is what should be the objective. And not this fight and burning and destroying properties. Company not said for that matter. Do it with billions of money, billions of naira that they cannot account for. We are saying enough is enough to all of this drama. We don't need this. All right. In, in all of this, is there any part where there are expectations of the president? We saw uh, one of um, his, uh, you know, his supporters leading up to the election and after talking about uh, the person of Asai Dokubo, uh, basically calling out the president, saying that his administration is one of the worst. I'm putting a lot of the blame on this reverse issue at squarely at his feet. Uh, is there something the president can be doing in all of this, even though it's a state matter? Now, the president, our commander in chief of the armed force, because of that commander in chief of the armed force, whose duty primarily is to ensure the lives and property of Nigeria safeguarding it. The president was supposed to account for. It's so. Now, it's like somebody is on his own. You come and say, fine, I want to adopt you as my son. You are going to account for that person. The government already know that you have adopted that person. So the day you decide to pick your ticket and go for that election and people voted for you, mm. you have become their father. Father of nation. So as the father of this nation, Nigeria, this decision, the person all he needed to say was a word. There will be no more subsidy, and there was no more subsidy. He didn't have to do anything. He didn't write, he didn't say anything. Just his word. And laws. If the president come out and say, fine, look at the case of Ondo State. 
The whole drama in all this state has lingered for so long where we saw her a seeking governor. Of course, we know that health. All of us are victims of it. But then, what did the law say? Once you see that your health cannot carry you, transmit power to your deputy governor. A very simple thing. When you transmit this go uh, 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 right to your deputy governor, once your health is back, your deputy governor, you, you took him like a brother and you run in the same platform in, with the same ticket. Nobody has ever run in the office of the vice president. You have to run together with the uh, uh, office of the governor. As the vice deputy governor, you run together. It's a joint ticket. Many elections today has been notified. Many elections today has been torn and overturned because of the effect of a deputy governor. We saw the case of Bayasa State, another state. What we are trying to say here is very simple. The president has a sole right to call them to order. Anyone who suspects that that person is the reason why there's misery or why there's chaos, in Bayasa State, it should be called to order, should be brought to book, should be investigated, should be persecuted, and the people should be compensated. How would that be compensated? The essence of democracy is to be fed by the people, the common man. That's what we are saying. So a role of this of this drama continue like this, and then they continue to make themselves rich. But what happens to the people? We are waiting for them to make decisions that affect them positively. That's what we are saying. So the president should be able to call them. At this stage, first it was bomb blast in that complex. Now it is renovation as an excuse. All of that drama are unnecessary, like I've said. It is time for the person to call everyone involved in River State that an end has come to all of this drama. We don't need it. There have been too many deaths and too many crises in other states and in River State. Not at this time. We don't need all of that. We have suffered too long in this country with all of this. It is how do the poor man breathe, like the president says. I want the point of breathe. We don't breathe without food in their stomach. We don't breathe when house rent is increasing day by day, when they can't even pay light B, light B, go to some compound. Two tenants, they are paying 40,000 naira as light B. How much is the minimum wage? How many of these states has implemented the minimum wage? How much is a back of rice? And because of living has gone beyond transportation. And then you say the poor should breathe. The poor are not breathing. They cannot even breathe. Because you have not put laws that benefit the people. You say you are giving palliative of rice, of how many tons of rice. Who are the beneficiaries? Ask your neighbor who, who and who has benefited from the rice formula they are using to deceive us. That's the point. This is Christmas. How many of you palliative comes to your own community? Start with your own community. And it's something that the government share nationwide. You should start from your own community too. Are, are you not in Nigeria? Don't you live in the community? So we are saying that enough of all of these policies. It will make the minimum wage. I don't care if the budget of Nigeria moves to 40 trillion naira. As long as workers' salaries are no longer slave wage. A friend of mine happens to be a tenant in Nigeria trying to survive. And then she relocates to Barbados. Now, why in Barbados? She didn't need a tenant in work. She got a bad job. I am telling you, in a month, a week, they pay per week there. Per week, she earned 400,000. Per week, as a bartender in Barbados. Now, if you calculate it per month, how much is that? That's like 8 plus 8, that's 1.6 million naira for a bartender. So, uh, what needs to change? Because uh, one of our headlines. Uh, 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 the, from here. The, the president was actually um, seeking or appealing to doctors who have left to come back. You know what? What? What would sweeten the deal for people who've left? And um, I, I'd like to, you know, point out something that you know has been trending online. Uh, there is this argument being made that Nigeria or Africa or Nigeria specifically is experiencing another level of uh, what similar to what was experienced uh, during the eras where there was slavery. In terms of the fact that a lot of uh, uh, talents or a lot of uh, you know, uh, people who contribute greatly to the economy and to the nation are all, or most of them, or a lot of them, are leaving, and it's almost like we are losing uh, some of the best of us. And uh, so, but the president has appealed that doctors should return. I'd like to know, from your perspective, what do you think the president needs to be adding to make this appeal? Let it not be as though it's just calling people to use their sense of patriotism, but also their sense of, uh, you know, gain that, well, if I return, this is what awaits me. 
what can the president do to sweeten the deal, make no. the country attractive again? Now, let me tell you a clear case study of Akwaibum State. Right. Under the leadership of Governor Akwabio, when Akwabio became governor, his first thing now, in fact, it seems governor should only be allowed to do one thing now, because that is when they spend their time to work. Mm -hmm. Some of them, their second thing now, they just spend it enjoying themselves and traveling. I am telling you, this was a man who had vision. He researched a better opportunities for an acquirement. He said, come back home. The grass is not greener. Come back home. Palm trees, not bare fruit. Behind your butt, your, your, the back of your house. And he meant it when he said that. He was giving job, he was creating job, he was creating opportunity. Oh, I have my choir master. Who was leading us in the children choir at that stage. And then, when that thing, when the opportunity came, of course, he was doing Okada, but he was good with talent. He was from Akwaibo. He left. He left the church because he was seeking a better future for himself, his immediate and extended family. Just like most of our family members, most of our colleagues and associates, and most Nigerians who have relocated or Japan to other country. If I was your brother, and I cannot even feed myself and my wife and children. We finally had an opportunity for me to travel out where the grass is greener. And I am doing it over there. You don't just believe a man that just says something, that you have not seen anything on the ground. You know that even your relatives that are at home are still begging you, they are still suffering, they are still hungry. When you call them, you see poverty, and someone is telling you in the media that the person says she come back home. It goes beyond just asking people to come back home. It is what have you put in place for them to come back to? The hospitals are dilapidated. They change the budget. The education system. Very soon, strike will start again. Are we not in Nigeria? Look at this is the country that right now you can't get more than five thousand naira in the bank. Cashless policy has returned. You can't even get more than five thousand naira if it's not your, if you go to the ATM. They don't make money in the ATM. You go to players these days. They can only give you three thousand for hundred naira charges. It's not the country. Why are you talking about cashless policy? Go to America, go to Israel, go to China. People move to their ATM, go to their banks and get their money. In Nigeria, you suffer to make money, you suffer to spend your money. And somebody is telling you to come back. Come back where? When headsmen are killing people. When unknown women are killing people. Look at the girl that's supposed to travel the doctor, Chinelo, from Abuja to Kadima. The train incident. Up to this moment, what happened to the people that slaughtered this doctor? Do you know how many doctors have died in this country? Do you know how many lawyers have died in this country? Do you know how many journalists have died in this country? People with much talent. Just to mention but few. My brother, is that the country you are calling people to come back? That once you meet Nigeria, uh, abroad, you come to Nigeria, or you're away from the airport to your house, either you're being kidnapped, or either you enter one chance. Today as we speak, there is no day people don't enter one chance in the rest you. Go to Malaba, it's either you miss or your friend will miss. And then the rest of it, now human beings are no longer missing. It's the part of human beings that are missing. All of these things need to be checkmated. Nobody should deceive anybody. Nobody should come back if you have a better future abroad. Until Nigeria have decided, the president, the government, have decided to put in place things that we, we, we that have a fist to go that are here, to benefit our education. How many transportation systems do we have? How many transportation systems? They took away the top city. How many buses do they even provide on the streets? How many government and uh, public transit? Do you even see on mass transit? That the government has subsidized the price so that you and I, the common man, can benefit. That once you leave the studio here, you can just go and you see the government vehicle and then you pay a token and it takes you to the, your direction. None! None! So the private individuals who, of course, have this vehicle charge you exorbitant amounts, of course, because of how much is the fuel. They have to, it is, they have to spend. Look at my brother, please. It's, it's, it's prosperous. It's quite unfortunate that this country. We just continue to do lip service, promising things we cannot keep because we are politicians, because we think, oh, once we say something, people clap. Sometimes when I watch the president or some of these politicians make comments in, in public gardens and then people clap, I wonder what they are clapping to. What are you clapping for? As the people follow those things you are saying, look at the budget. All the states, for example, have signed all their budget for next year. They have made it before their state complex. And then the national budget, of course, of over 26, 27 trillion naira is there. My brother, 12 months from today, ask yourself, 
who are you benefited from that budget? How did the government utilize that budget? How was it spent? Nothing will be accounted for. Do you think this also uh, puts pressure on the government uh, because of the fact that they removed uh, subsidy and the expectations that that money or whatever was being paid or being saved will be channeled into other uh, more lucrative um, things that benefit the nation? Now, the government of President Tulubu she won't come and tell us there's no money in Nigeria. My brother, there is money right now in Nigeria. Why? The taxation that is going to the government coffers from the poor men that was supposed to breathe, who are not breathing, mm. are huge. From the subsidy from other sectors, you need to see taxation. In front of my own school, you need to see taxation. In front of my own hotel, you need to see taxation. Who is taxing them? Of course, you and I have the answer. The government. How much is the fuel before now when they took over government? My brother, how much was it? 162 naira. How much is it presently? 600 or something naira. By how many percent? So the government, of course, assumed that once this subsidy uh, is removed, the money, of course, goes to the government coffers. It will be used judiciously for the betterment of the people. Is it not enough time for the people to start benefiting from that subsidy removal? If this one area you want to visit and and do they if it is the, the electricity or, or job pressure, do now pay if this education the person have just said that under him there will be no strike under him how true is it how much are you going to pay the teachers the lecturers the minimum wage go to state my brother you read state are not even paying promotion allowance promotion what are you saying the state have not even accepted to pay the minimum wage of thirty thousand naira at this stage nobody Working in the industry and less than hundred thousand naira, because only hundred thousand even buy a bag of rice is how much? So if only a five, a man is five and three children. A bag of rice only lasts for three months. Fifty thousand is gone. How much is electricity? Like I said, how much is so many other commodities? How much is school fees? Go to schools and see. The annoying part is that right now it is even the federal schools that are becoming more expensive. Things that are supposed to benefit the people. Initially, it was a private. It's no longer private. Go to federal universities. It is by 100%. Look at the case of Lagos. Look at the case of University of Lagos. Look at the case of Unica. 100% increment. Have you asked yourself if the parents are paying those school fees, if their salary has increased? Then some of them are state workers, local government workers. Which state, of course, have not even accepted to pay 30,000 minimum wage. In fact, I will advise. All civil servants, if it's possible, avoid having a child if you have one from ninety a certain period mm. because we are not praying. But with the very language of this government, I don't see any change taking effect drastically in a short period because until something drastic happens in a short period, we are going to weigh hollow on this shallow grave that our hands are already up begging for help. Well, um, it's a, a dire picture you paint there. Um, uh, but you know, Nigerians always expect uh, the best, hopefully, from their uh, president. But we'll wait and see how it turns out. That being said, you've already touched on the Ondo issue. Uh, I'd like to get your thoughts, uh, particularly in this regard. Uh, Mr. Akredolo was the MBA president, I believe, at the time when um, uh, Mr. Uh, Yaradwa had issues uh, with his health while in office and he gave his advice about following the law and all of that. I'd like to get your thoughts on this issue and how it has dragged so far. What impact do you think it has had on the people of Ondo State? Now, three weeks ago, I was with the Deputy Governor of Ondo State. We, of course, met in a general's uh, sanctioned ceremony here in the FCT. And I had the opportunity to tell him one thing, be strong. This is politics. By law, we already know what the law says. That once a governor or a president is having such challenges with their health, all you need to do is to transmit to the National Assembly or the State Assembly that I am just allowing my deputy to act on my behalf within the period I need to go and take care of my health. Is that too much to ask or to do? It's your health we are talking about. The shortest cut to a man's grave is when he's sick. At that stage, each man are helpless because it is the shortest cut to their grave. 
All they need to do at that time is to focus, is to concentrate on their health, not to play politics. What will they cause you to transmit power? We saw when Buhari traveled for his medical upkeep and transmitted power to uh, Osibanjo. Osibanjo did, Osibanjo did what Buhari could not do in four years. Because he had all of this idea packed within him, waiting to establish them. He wanted to prove himself. Oh, in Nigeria, truly, it is the worst people that are leading us. And the best of them, we ignore them because of money. We ignore the best of brain because of money. I don't mean ignore them, they are not putting themselves forward. Well, they are putting themselves forward, but the system which we are seeing these days, or the kind of position we are producing these, these days, are telling us who, of course, use their money to get what they want. Not because they have visions to lead their people. They just want a name. They just want to use that money they have, they have, they have, they have gotten. In gotten word. To see how they can manipulate themselves into power. No, power is sweet. And it's tempting. Mm. And most of these people who ask for this power, this power abuse it. Abuse this power. That's why the best of brain, because of money, look at the primary. How is election produced in Nigeria? A very simple logic. Elections are produced in Nigeria through a state called the primary election. Now, in the primary election, various aspirants are meant to first buy their ticket, which comes at exorbitant amount. And after that stage, they are allowed to also have their way with their delegates. How many delegates are ready to vote for aspirants without first enriching himself? They are not being they are not they are not being so compatible that these persons are going to, if successfully, win the election to become a leader. So, is, this is a question of the chicken or the egg. Which came first? Is it that the electorate began to demand too much from people running for office, uh, thereby making them, you know, quote unquote, pay? I've never been. Been free, or is it if, that the politicians were the ones who began or began this uh, cycle of, you know, incentivizing uh, voters so that at the end of the day they can recoup their losses when they win elections? You know. Now, what started is if you very simple. Why are you talking about vote buyer at the polling unit? You fail to understand that these same politicians first have to buy the candidate. The politician will need to buy the candidate to win the primary election. Do you know how much it costs to pay a delegate or to buy a delegate? The worst of people, politicians are the ones that succeed in buying the delegate. These politicians, these leaders, don't have such money to waste. They come with their visions and their ideas, hoping that the people will definitely choose them because of their plan for the people. But the worst of them will come with those money and give it to delegate. Oh, of course, one delegate said, and I quote, that all his entire life as a civil servant for 35 years, he didn't make as much money, including his benefit when he retired, as the amount he got as a delegate for one day in Calabar. A, 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 a particular retired civil servant that was part of the delegate. How can somebody make up to 46 million naira as a delegate? Who's giving the money? Who's enriching you? And you say that kind of person tomorrow will now sit somewhere and will tell you that delegate should not be paid. You know, of course, he has benefited from it. You never complain till you finish your tenure and go. Now, what we need to do if we are producing politicians from that delegate, let those delegates be people of moral standing that will not comp that will not compensate or or will not compromise their conscience. If that is done from that level, you can have people like Osibanjo with all the credentials, with well, all the experience. For example, well, is that possible? Well, I ask because uh, the delegate is possible outside the, the country, but it's not possible in Nigeria. Well, because we are fanatically corrupt people. Is that what you're going to say? I'm asking. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that what you're well, saying? Well, I don't know, but you can only have the that you just one day move to that level. The reason yeah, I say is, the right thing. Yeah, but the reason I say is a party system. Delegates don't exist in isolation. So somebody has to ensure that the delegates emerging are of good moral standing, like you say. So where does that begin? Is this a cultural reset we begin? Now, need? now uh, as a local politician, let me tell you what happened in delegate. Mm. Now, a particular world. Then we get one person that go mm. on behalf of the world. Mm. They are looking forward to him coming back to bring the proceeds of what he's going to compensate his conscience with to come and distribute among themselves. So it starts with we. You better see yourself as part of the problem. I used to put myself as part of the problem. We are the problem. Until we have, you know, put ourselves 
of corruption. Watch yourself. Of our conscience, the, the ones that are corrupt already are entered into a new man of patriotism for our nation. Things will continue to go the way it's going. Because obviously, we are not thinking of what to benefit today, and then in the next four years, we still become victim of complaining of what we use our own hand to do. We are our own doings. It's not me and you, of course, that are here. That's the truth. Because we are not the delegates, we are neither the one that chooses them. We are legitimate. Young men are trying to pursue a career legitimately. All right, just, just a quick question. Um, just the other day, um, we were at uh, an anti corruption mm -hmm. award ceremony where pe people were sort of rewarded for having integrity. Do you think we need to also start to do that? Because uh, one issue we have is people are more. Who are the organizers of it? Uh, it was an anti corruption body. Now, one yeah. of them, UFCC. No, no, I'm talking about a private group now, not okay. a, But my question is, do you think that we're also reaching a stage where people are even mocked for doing good? You know, take for instance, uh, you have an opportunity to cut corners, get some money for yourself, and you decide that, you know what, I want to follow the rules. We've seen in, in instances where such a person is mocked and ridiculed that you are not wise, you are not smart. Uh, is that part of what needs to change? No. My father will always say, good name. Is better than go on silver. Mm. Imagine we, you and I, civilized, educated, exposed, decide to go into Yahoo Yahoo. Man, we're going to hit it big. Hello. Mm. Because we've seen hunger, we probably test a little of our friends who share a little of this cake. And we have seen people who share this cake, how they live their lifestyle. We would have never been such to live like them, wearing fancy clothes, ride on fancy cars. In all of that, but remember where you're coming from. Remember your Catholic background. But I'll tell you that look, whatever you do out there, remember that your parents, your siblings, if you rub their name to the north, you will die before the death even comes to meet you. We put all of this in our head. My father still calls every money, and my mom calls every money to pray for me. Like today, it shall be well with you. Those boys who do these, those, these things, their parents are not praying for them that it shall be well with them. Because they are already giving their parents the impression that it's already well with them. They are waiting for your prayers. They have made themselves their own gods by what they do. Those boys, I had a matter in SARS, I was trying to, you know, an officer involved in Katev. An officer involved in Katev. Who was his reason? That he wants to have a car like some of his colleagues. Man. Is that how bad we have become? What is car? How many people have died and carry the car? The car said we are even killed some of these people. And that is the reason why you, you are supposed to be patriotic, abusing your office. Man, I walk away. Man, you say walk away. I won't do that kind of case. I walk away. You bear your, 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 your loss. You answer your questions, young man. You don't come to me and tell me you want to do that kind of shit with me. I don't do that. Well, uh, let's be mindful of the language there. Yeah. But um, let, let's quickly move over to um, the issue of um, the, some of the victims uh, in uh, Kaduna uh, seeking um, redress. Um, I believe they, it says they are suing the federal government. What do you think? What are you suing the federal government for? They accidentally now, uh, killed uh, some now, of them. I will be the last person to collect money as compensation for the loss. Life is not something you can buy, it's priceless. Uh, but the, the, I know I'm coming now. I'm coming. Uh, I'm, I'm coming. All right. First, the senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria have just donated their salary. What a shame to the good people of Kaduna State as compensation for their loved ones killed by the military in the name of. Negligence. What do you call misfire? Drone misfire. Lives are not accounted for. I'll come back to the National Pension Commission. We are actually not doing anything to count who are we is alive and who are we is dead. For how many years we had censors? Even to see how many people died every day in our local communities that are not accounted for. You definitely know that this country, a lot is happening behind the scene. A lot that needs to be discussed. Kaduna, one, the, the one in Kaduna, just one. As we speak today, a soldier in NYC camp assaulted a core member, even for the intervention of the, those ahead of their, in the House of Affairs. They would have gone NYC down today, university. 
How many of how many of values can you see today? Some of us are people going to have somebody in those offices. Every day in Nigeria, things like this happen on chat. What if the young man had died? They can't remember. Okay, what if, uh, of course, the copper said, fine, they are not going to accept that assault. In fact, they chased the soldiers. And then before you know, they the life where they have to shoot and all of that. And before you know, riot and all of that. We need to change some of the things we do in this country. That case of the people asking for justice is their right. Hello. That's their right. But for me, I would rather spend time mourning my grief. I would rather spend time mourning my grief. But definitely, of course, the matter has to be investigated. And those who, of course, had a case to answer should be persecuted. And of course, the people should be compensated. It is solely their right to seek for compensation. The one you give them as donation is like, your, okay, take this one for killing your brother. No, they are saying that, no, don't give us a game on that your donation. Now, you have to pay for these damages you have done because some of them are breadwinners. Some of them now left behind relatives. God forbid if anything happened to me. Everybody should seek for compensation because one, my aging parents need to be taken care of. Hello. Unless it is a national or uh, it is just on nat natural causes. Because there are people like feet. What about the children? What about my community? Some of us are community leaders. Some of us have relatives that depend on us. And then, God forbid, somebody from nowhere now come and fire or misfire a drill and you're wiped out from the surface of this world forever. What happened to those first responsibility you're leaving behind? Who fits them? That is why they're asking for this. In fact, we should demand more from the federal government as long as it will wipe their tears and taking care of those children and wives and relatives they left behind. So that government will learn their lessons that each life should be accounted for or each life in this country has to be valued. Of course, they are budgeted in their budget. They have the highest budget. I mean the security. They should include it in their budget, even if it is 50 billion dollars compensation for the people, the people of Kaduna State. So that next time they learn their lesson. Is it only in Kaduna State? It's happening everywhere, but it's not being reported. It's happening everywhere. Strange bullet. All of all manners of killing is happening in this country. Well, uh, the, the new budget um, also has a significant portion for defense for security once more. But wh what do you think we might uh, not be getting this completely uh, correct? So how do we, you know, begin to solve these things where uh, w somehow these uh, non-state actors find a way to remain equipped? They find a way to still function. Uh, despite, uh, I'm sure you've heard about um, the, tra the um, what I call it, the travails or the reputation of the Nigerian army. You know, we're well respected even outside the shores of the country. But while, w while within, you know, we're seeing a lot of things that uh, it was expected that we would have nipped in the boat, particularly when eight years of President Muhammad Buhari was said to be a former head uh, military man, so he was going to, you know, resolve all the issues and so on. Where, where else do you think we should be looking at? Especially now that once again, defense is taking you know a significant portion of the budget. Now, the first lesson I learned is not to trust anyone because of their title. Who could believe that Major General Muhammad Buhari retired with all his experience could have the worst eight years of insecurity in Nigeria? My brother, that was the worst. You agree with me? F starting from the henchmen, the bandits, the Boko Haram. Of course, some of them did not start the way he came into government. They were there, but they became obvious. In fact, they walk with their shoulders high under him. A major general retired. We just expect that with all this experience that we voted for him, that oh, fine, now we have someone who have this experience. They were going to be such wasted lives. Wasted lives that the government were negotiating with terrorists, paying which amount of money they couldn't even go after them. They were just managing them, pampering them, you know, giving them all they want so that their Athenon can just do and go. Now, today, the Athenon has do and go. Lives have been wasted. And I think this was not enough. How many are we going to mention? Look at the case that happened between the army general, then, Buratai. With the shite movement. Oh, my brother. That was a massacre. Was it 
he was he was he was not needed. That drama was not needed. You were coming on the road, you saw these people do their possession. Find another route. You were because these lives, of course, look at what they did to Exazaki. Shot him, his wife, his sons, and then detained him for so many years and then treated him and all of that. Man, we have not known our lesson truly from how the Boko Haram started. How about St. John mismanaged the case of Yusuf? If we have learned our lesson, we understand that we need to check some of the things we do as a nation. That, that, that issue was over, it was unnecessary. And that gave birth to so many other crises. Now, what are we talking about? If the president be a president, let him act as one. Let him call any one who is not acting rightly. To do the right thing, or the person should leave that office. In the days of Jonathan, we saw how ministers, of course, were being given, some of them sat for only three months, and they left. Because once you're not doing your job, you leave another person take over. Do you understand? So what we are saying here is that let the president checkmate his ministers, let him checkmate the chief of staffs and all of that. No, no, it's not even up to it. the person should go. There are 99 people that are more qualified than that person that is doing that thing. Except that some of us tribalism have allowed us and sentiment. We just bring some of the for our tribe. Even if the person is not doing well, we just allow the person to just be there. So that our man can be there. Tribalism is what is eating us. That's why we're having incompetent leaders. Because we want our people to be there. Enough of all of that. Let's look for people that have passions. We are talking about Nigerians who, of course, are patriotic to the betterment of Nigerians. As we lay this case to rest, I'm calling on the federal government to do the needful in all those states. The deputy governor does not have the right to assume that office in the absence of the governor. Well, that, that, that is in motion now. I believe he has. Um uh, so Why does he have to wait until all of these issues generate all of this? It was unnecessary. You're not feeling fine. Go and take care of your head. Let somebody else be there. When you are back, by God's grace, if you are back alive, you take over your power in your seat. Nobody is disputing that. And then for the impeachment that is trying to take place in River State, it's unnecessary. It's going to cause more bloodbath. It's going to cause more crisis. They shall have peace. The person should call everyone involved to order, starting from the former governor and the current governor. And all those members are defected. They should all come back and sit on the table and have a discussion on how to better the life of their people and leave sentiment and politics. Ele campaign is over. You have been elected. You don't need to swap to another party to give the people dividend of democracy. You don't need that. The party you were elected for, stay there and give the people what they want. The basic abilities of life. So with this, I think I I will say they never corner have it. Nobody give what he does not have. What language is that? That is Greek. In law. Okay. Now, give what you have. The ones you don't have, don't promise people next time what you cannot do. The ones you can do with the little resources you have from the government, give it to the people. Let the people be the benefactor of these budgets. Next year, all of these budgets that have been signed should be transmitted into the life of every Nigerian citizen from the national budget to the state budget. People should feel the impact of it. We need this hunger. We need this school fees. We need this the, the amount of back of rice. We thought the president once said, or somewhere, somewhere, somehow I saw that news that the, the border should be open. Please, I'm using this program to come on the federal government. There's no point blocking the border. Open the border, check me what and what is coming in. We don't produce everything. Now our population we should be over 220 million if we can do a good census. And when that happens, it simply means that the ones you cannot produce, other people that produce it from other state or country or nation can bring them. Mm. We just check the ones that are good. We accept the ones that are not good. We tell them but the borders should be open. Not yeah. just in the northern part, not just in Lagos. All the borders in Nigeria should be open. Let them be full of rice. Rice cannot be contraband goods. It's mm. rice for being safe. That's what we eat. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Prince Ojoka Esquire. It's been a pleasure listening to you. And uh, hopefully we'll get to have you back soon. What you said at the end there uh, about, you know, opening all the borders, uh, I, I think it's uh, something the president really needs to consider. Either you do something completely or... You know, you let it go. No half measures. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, me. Mr. Madi, for having me. All right. Uh, that's how we round up the program for today. Don't forget, the Polity reaches you live from Abuja every weekday, 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Join us uh, tomorrow once again, where we delve into that final section of politics, governance, and the state of the nation. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow.
I am Amadine Ogbewe.